Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to install Home Assistant to King Kong Lee Server 16 because the Server 16 is a Raspberry Pi controller so in this video I will show you how to step by step just for Raspberry Pi Home Assistant beginner so that will have many skills for the Home Assistant uh, for example you can see it here uh, you may how to install the Home Assistant on SD card and how to enable iSquarcy bus for Raspberry Pi for Home Assistant and how to install HACS add-on for Home Assistant and how to integrate the iSquarcy extended chip for Home Assistant and how to configure YAML file for Home Assistant so there are many different skills for the Home Assistant the same information will be large so I will make this video just uh, will be take a long time so you will understand deeply Okay, let's first look at our Raspberry Pi controller gateway. So you can see this is King Kong Server 16. It's mainly used by the Raspberry Pi 4. You can see here that is Raspberry Pi CM4, just a computer 4 module. So you can install any Linux system uh, on this Raspberry Pi. Just uh, this video, we will install the Home Assistant. Maybe in future, I will install the Node Red uh, for the Server 16 and I'll show you how it works and also you can see it supported the 4G module and many different hardware resources for input and for output and the wireless uh, so this is the every pin define for the server 16 and uh, this video I will do this mainly the five step at here and show you how to begin the arrow okay let's look at how it works details Okay, let's look at the hardware details firstly. You can see this is King Kong Server 16. It's a Raspberry Pi controller I have said. You can see this is relay output that have 16 channel relay output. Every relay that have come and normal open. Just the two terminal. Uh, it's also removable. And you can see it here is that have a I2C bus just for external I2C device. And this is a PWM output two channel PWM output you can use for dimmer and this is RS232 interface IXT and TXT and this is RS485 uh, for A and B and this is the power supply and here you can see that have the digital input and the free GPL for Raspberry Pi 4 and the receive RF receive module because this have a socket you can connect with the I have 433 megahertz socket at here and this is IR receiver uh, used for the IR device and the USB part uh, that have four channel USB part and the USB-C uh, for download the firmware and the HDMI uh, connect with your monitor HDMI and this is SD card card read and this is the Ethernet for Raspberry Pi you can see the jump if at the left that will Boot from the SD card. If you change to the right, that will put from the USB cable. So this just uh, choose the boot load. And inside you can see the blue uh, heat link because we have already installed the Raspberry Pi. And, and you can see this is a PCB inside. So we have already installed the Raspberry Pi module on this socket. Okay. In this box, you can also connect with a Wi-Fi antenna. You can use an external Wi-Fi antenna if you install in your power distribution box. But this time, in this video, I just use the Ethernet. I prefer Ethernet. Ethernet will be more stable than Wi-Fi. And this box, this box also supports the install on the dim rail, so that you can install the power distribution box. Okay. So. In this video, I will remove this SD card because this I have using. I just remove it. So when you received this new King Kong Server 16, and you can prepare an SD card. Uh, for example, you can you choose this one SD card. I just choose a 64 gigabyte. You can see uh, 64. Gigabyte, uh, and you can also choose the large one or the small one. At least I think uh, 32 gigabyte at least. So I choose this one. So I will use this from zero from beginner. 
get to the SD card. Okay. Just use this one and the high speed. And you can insert it here. But before you insert it here, we need to download the Home Assistant image right to this SD card. Because my computer already have a SD card read, you can see that I have a socket. And you can also use a USB SD card read. I just insert it here. Now let's back to my computer. And the first step, we need to make the Home Assistant SD card for King Kong Day Server 16. That means you need to write the Home Assistant image to the SD card. You can download this software by this link. Just use this Raspberry Pi image. I have already installed. You can download for your Windows PC or you can download for Mac OS compute. So I have already downloaded, so we we'll just open this Raspberry Pi image. And here you can see uh, that uh, attention uh, let me to update. I just click no. And the first you need to choose the device. You, because we have used the Raspberry Pi 4, so you can choose this one, Raspberry Pi 4. And the second, you can choose operation system. You can click and you will see there are uh, options that should the other special OS. You can click and you will see the home assistant and home automation system. Just click this one. And now you can choose this blue one, a uh, home assistant. And choose this one, home assistant, this person, click. Okay, and uh, click this one, and you will find this SD card have detect. Just click, and we can click the next. And are you sure? Just click yes, continue. Okay, you can see that will prepare to write and starting download the firmware from the internet. We just wait the writing process until 100% wait for a moment. Okay, you can see this is complete. Uh, I just cancel this step. It's no problem. Because I want to save the time of the video. Click continue and click close. And now the SD card is make complete. We can back to this step. Uh, this just the first one we have complete. Now we can in get the SD card and insert to server 16 controller. Okay, you can see I can get the SD card from my computer. And I can insert to my server 16 at here. Just insert it here. And make sure your jump is uh, this way, just as uh, the left, uh, this way, the jump. And you will connect with the Ethernet cable. I use the Ethernet. And this I will connect with a DC 12 volt power supply. So I just connect to this power supply. Okay, you can see the red LED is become work. Just put it here. So we can back to my computer. Just wait for a moment. We can input the URL, home assistant, and add the port and enter. Okay, you can see, you just refresh, refresh, refresh. Because the home assistant, uh, the controller is startup, it needs 10. So I can refresh sometimes that will be have this displayed. The prepare for home assistant install. 
So this maybe will take about uh, 20 minutes, so you just need to wait. If you want to show details, you can see it here. Just click show details. And that is the details of the progress the Home Assistant is installed. Okay. <clears throat> okay, now we just have to wait. Okay, after some minutes, you can see this is the welcome information for Home Assistant and uh, we need to create an account for Home Assistant so you can click create my smart home and uh, click your name for example, I import the username King Kone and the password 123456 and the password again 123456 just for testing so you can see this is my password I have import and choose your language I choose English and create account okay we can click the next and click the country I just choose anywhere for test I can click next and click next and click finish Okay, until now the Home Assistant is installed on the Server 16 but we want to use the digital input and use the relay for switch for on and off so we need to go on for the feature step so you can see at here at the second, why we need to enable the I2C for the Home Assistant you can see the Server 16, the schematic, you will see that have many different relay. You can see this have 16 channel relay because the Raspberry Pi GPIO is not very uh, very large. So that have in not, not enough for you to use. Because we have the digital input, many different GPIO to use. So we have used an I2C external chip. You can see at here. Just this chip for digital input you can see this chip for digital output this you can see the MCP23017 so this is for I2C bus for ex external 16 channel digital output and 16 channel digital input so we need to integrate this chip to Home Assistant because this chip is work by I2C bus. You can see the SDA and SCL. And also you can see the PCB board. We can see the uh, 2D mode. You can see just this chip. This chip, you can see the digital input that have I2C date, the SDA and SCL. And uh, we can see uh, the, the line, you can see. I can let it. You can see that have connect with this Raspberry Pi CM4 pin define. So this can connect with it CM4. We need to enable the I2C for CM4 so that we can use the I2C function. Because you can see if you go to your home assistant dashboard and at here you can uh, at, at here you setting your your user for the administry firstly advanced mode just enable this way the first first step and you will see the hardware we can see the check setting and the system and the hardware and all hardware you can click because if I input I square C you can see this is no anything I square C resource I can use so the default setting of the Raspberry Pi have disabled the I2C bus. So we need to enable it so that we can use many different I2C devices. So later in future, we will add this I2C bus to our board. So this is the first step you need to enable it. Okay, now we can back to this online guide. Uh, the first, you need to enable the I2C bus. So that you need to do this step. Uh, what does this means? That you need to add files to the 
SD card. So now you need to remove this SD card and install it to my computer again. I can power off firstly because I need to remove this SD card. And insert to my computer again, you can see. Okay, insert the SD card at here. And now you can open your computer disk. And you can see this is Raspberry Pi disk. And you will see, we can just do as this instruction. You can see in the load of the partition, I will need to add a new folder called config so you can see just uh, before at this uh, disk edge we can make a new folder that called config just as this way config and in the config folder and add another new folder that called modules so you can copy this one that called modules enter the computer folder and and a new folder that called modules. And inside of a module folder, just enter this model and create a text file called Raspberry Pi I square C dot config. So you can see just I can create create a file new and this file. I rename to this one, you can see. Click yes, rename to this, and with the following content. So you need to add this line, just copy and edit this file. You can see, add it with notepad. Just only to append uh, this one, uh, this one, this command, I square C device, and you can click save and click close. And this file, you can see. That is great. Okay, and we can back to the load of the partition. You can see we need to edit this config.txt file. Just we need to add this two line. So I can copy this two line and back to my disk, SD card disk, and you will find this config.txt file. Just at here, config.txt. And I can Click edit. And at the last, you can see, just at last, you can paste at here. Uh, this two command is I paste at here. Then you can click save the file and close the file. And now we can close this window and remove the SD card and port to server 16 again. And now you can see I can remove this SD card and insert to my server 16. And you can see, I just insert it here. And I will power on. Okay, with the server 16 startup, wait for a moment. Now we can refresh uh, this one. You can refresh this web page, and because it's power off and power on again, we need to log in again. Think on me, username, and the password is 123456, and the login. Okay, now we can click the hardware again. You can click it here. And this time I import i square c and you will see uh, that have list i square c four channel device uh, because we have only used one channel we have enabled all i square c bus interface uh, for the raspberry pi 4 that is successfully you have enabled it so we can go on for the furthermore step okay let's back to this step well we have done this step one and step two and now, we, at last, we need to install this add-on. So before we install this add-on, we need to install the HACS add-on firstly. And before we install this HACS, 
you need to install the SSH firstly. So we can see, click it here. This is just a Home Assistant Online Store that you can install the third part of the add-on. So at the first, you can see the online guide. I just click this one, how to install HACS. So you can see the first stop, you need to go to this add-on store and install one of SSH that is remote uh, manage your Raspberry Pi file tool. So you can see, I can use this one, this window, I can let it become smaller and go to this setting and go to this add-on. I just use this two window. So we can go to this add-on store. You can see this add-on. So just a setting and add-on and add-on store. Just click this one, add-on store. And you can search SSH. So you can search SSH. So I can install this one. Uh, this one because it's a part of the web terminal. I just click install. And you can see, I just install this one. And according to this document and start this, uh, later I will show you go on for this step. And as the first, uh, we need to install this SSH firstly. Just wait for some seconds. Okay, this is install complete. And you can see it here. And we need to uh, import the username and the password for this SSH. I think you just uh, put an import one. For example, I can import Kinkoni, the username of SSH, and the password is one, two, three, four, five, six. Just this one. It's very easy. And we can click save. Save this one. And we can click to this one and show in sidebar, enable it, so that uh, you, you can see it here, that have a terminal, and click start, start this add-on. And you can see this turn green, so that it start successfully. And we also can click this logo file, and you can see uh, that it start successfully. And back, and uh, back, just click open web UI. So this is Home Assistant SSH terminal, uh, just a command line, such as the Windows command line. So at this window, we can go on for install HACS. You can see, uh, start, this, start this SSH and connect to this SSH and run the HCS download script. So just this one command. Uh, download the script. We can click this one. I can copy uh, this code and you can paste it here. And how to paste, you can see uh, that have a note. You can use maybe you country V is not work. So you can choose country shift V. So I can click and I use country shift V. So you can see uh, this is pasted successfully because it's a command line. Uh, maybe you have used another system, not Windows. So you can choose this different way, which way is for you just paste for this command. So now I can press Enter. Okay, this is begun. Download and to install the HACS. Okay, this is install complete. You can see, remember to restart Home Assistant before you configure it. So now we need to restart the Home Assistant. And how to restart the Home Assistant, you can see, just click setting and click the system. And you will find this icon. Click and you can restart Home Assistant. And click restart. Okay, just wait for some seconds. You can see this is the last connection that will be restart and the reconnection uh, usually will take about 15 seconds. Okay, and you can see that is Home Assistant restart. 
and let's go on. And when you restart, you can click this configuration and initial configuration. In your Home Assistant UI, go to the in integrate panel. So you can see, we can let it become smaller. Okay, you can see the first step, you go to the setting, just click this one, and then the device and the service. The device and the service at here, click. And click the integration, add integration. And now you can see, you can input HACS. That will be displayed. So you can click this one, Okay, at uh, this step, you can see at the online guide, I uh, just uh, uh, this window. So this helps show you only the last item you is optional. Uh, others, all you need to check the box. So you can see, I can click, 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 click this one. And the last, last you can click or not click, or no problem. And you can click submit. And we can see it here. Now, this Home Assistant HACS needed to open your GitHub. So you can click this one. And at here, enter the code displayed on your device. Uh, because at here, you will see this one. You can copy and uh, paste. Just paste at here and you can click continue. Okay, and click this one. Okay, configuration is complete. Just go on and you can see it here. You have linked your GitHub and with your HACS. And back, we can close this window. And you can see that have showed successfully. And click finish. Okay, this you have installed the HACS. Uh, this is an online store. Uh, you can choose many different uh, at this H by this HACS. And at the left window, you can see uh, this HACS is have a new display. Okay, let's back to our online guide. And the next step, you can see the step for because we need to install this MCP chip the add-on so you can click this one and also have the online guide at here and uh, you can see at here we need to install this HA for this one and we will use this first way use the HACS so that you can add this link just copy this link copy and to your customer and we can click this one we have to show this option and if you want to try to add a customer response tree as the following the integration just click this one you can see uh, this integration at here uh, because the first thing you need to click at this and click this one, integration, and click this one. That have uh, this option. You can click. And this one, you just paste. We have copied. Paste it here. And the category, you can click integration, and click add. OK, that have been added. Okay, let's check this HACS and click integration and click this one and click this customer and click this one and we will find uh, this is the intent of this add-on and click download because we need to download this MCP23017 chip customer libraries to your Raspberry Pi. So I can click download. And after download, we'll put the files 
uh, on your SD card at this folder. Okay, we can back, and now you can see uh, this have download, but you need to restart. So we can go to setting again, and go to the system, and click this one, and restart Home Assistant. And this is the first step we have done. So we just need to, the last step will be successfully. So at the last, we need to config this chip. I just use this way. We have already write the config YAML file. So you can click this one, open in a new window, and click at here because we want to use the 16 switch and the 16 input and the 16 output. You can see this is a switch for output and a switch for input. So this code all at here. You just copy and paste. It's very easy. We need to edit the config file. You can see uh, the home assistant will have a config file. But if we want to edit it, so you need to uh, use this edit file add-on. This we need to install this add-on so that you can change the config YAML file. So we can go to this settings and go to this add-ons. And also you can click this one, add-on store, and choose this one, file edit. Uh, you can also input file. This file edit is very easy to modify your code. Click and just click install and wait some, some moment and you can configure the YAML file. Okay, this is complete. And after complete, we just uh, you can choose this option, show inside bar that will be enabled, will be easy to click at here and click start and start the add-on. Okay, this is start complete. And we can click file edit. And this time we can click this folder and choose this one, configuration.yaml. This is the config file for Home Assistant. So we can click and at here, uh, that is only uh, a few sentence. We can paste all our code. You can see just at here, that have our config YAML file. Uh, just this link, you can see uh, config YAML file for read and input. So you just copy and paste this all code. And copy and paste at here. I just paste it here. Okay, you can see I can create the 16 channel button for the binary sensor. And this is for the relay output switch. So you just need to click save. And after save the config YAML file, you need to restart the home assistant. You can see the settings and the system and this one and restart home assistant. And after reboot, we can click setting and click device and service. And this time you will see this have displayed uh, this I2C extend MCP chip have extend. You can click and you will see uh, this have already added to the home assistant. And you can configuration for any pink fan, whether have invert the logic, uh, change the state, or whether have the pull up uh, resistance, you can set for everything independently. But we can back and back to overview. And now you can see the home assistant have automatic added this MCP chip, the, the output and the input at the dashboard. So you can see I can turn off and you can see our uh, server 16 that really can all off and this can be all on and so you, now you can see I can control this every channel really uh, for on and off it's very easy and also let's test the binary sensor for this digital input uh, pay attention to my this uh, button 1 to button 6 I will shut in uh, server 16 digital input and here you can see that is the digital input 1 and this is the ground so I can shut for this to 
terminal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is ground. And this is digital input one. So you can see I shot for this in my Huang Sing dashboard. That will be on. So this will be off. And this will be on. So this digital input is working. So until now, you have do this all step. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And you have created the Home Assistant firmware in your Server 16. And you can use this Home Assistant basic function for digital input and the relay output. This is controlled by PC. And also you can use your mobile phone. Just install Home Assistant mobile phone application on your iPhone or on your Android phone. So that you can use these two mobile phones at the same time. Okay, you can see uh, this is my iPhone and this is Android phone. If you use iPhone, you can search in Apple Store, just search Home Assistant and install it. And if you use Android phone, you can just search in Google Play. So that you can search Home Assistant. And after install online complete, and you can use this two mobile phone application at the same time. Okay, let's look at my iPhone and my Android phone. Uh, this is download the application and open it first time. You can see I just click continue and click continue. Uh, make sure your Wi Fi have connected with your load and the King Kong Server 16 also have connected with the load, just the same load because they, they can work in local network. You can see the auto detect the IP address in iPhone and in Android phone. So we can click enter, choose this server and then choose this server and input the username and the password we have created the username is kinkoni and the username also is kinkoni and the password is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and the password is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and the login and the login Okay, and click continue. And now you will see the Home Assistant dashboard is displayed. And this is for the output, and this is for input, and this is for the output. And let's test it. If I can turn on, you can see the iPhone and the Android phone will update the state at the same time. And also my PC is update the state. And you can see if I turn all off and turn all on, my PC and iPhone and Android phone is all updated. I can turn off and iPhone and PC is also updated. Okay, so this is very easy. And you can see uh, this relay. So you can see I can control one relay, turn on uh, this relay one and turn off and turn on and turn off and on, off, on, off uh, by different user. So you can use many different mobile phones at the same time. Okay, until now you have complete install the Home Assistant software and configure it successfully. You can use your PC and use your mobile phone and use your Android phone and the iPhone uh, work at the same time. So this is successfully for you. Okay, thanks for watching.